What's up, smarty people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Smarter? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time, DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote. Maybe you could have me at your next event. You know, I like to party with the people. Let the people be entertained. Make your next thing a big one. Also, if you'd like to tell your story or hear the stories of others, I encourage you to check out my other podcast. It's called What Makes You Famous. Find it everywhere using the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Now, on with the show. Today on the program, historical facts. You know, I like some facts. You know, I like some history. I read a single article and I become a, an expert on a subject. That's how the internet works, right? <laughs> Today's historical fact is five inventions that came out of the Great Depression. The Great Depression began in 1929 and lasted for an entire decade, affecting nearly every aspect of daily life for people all over the world and hitting the United States, especially hard u.s unemployment soared to nearly 25 percent businesses shuttered and families lost their life savings food became scarce in many communities especially as a severe drought hit the great plains leading to the agricultural disaster known as the dust bowl we'll discuss that a little bit later this difficult error also impacted innovation dependent Independent inventors, sorry, independent inventors found themselves with less funding and many businesses shied away from risky initiatives. But big inventions also helped keep companies and innovators afloat during the hard times. Some inventions were successful specifically because of the economic downturn, such as the groundbreaking new adhesive that could repair just about anything. For others, success came in spite of the crisis. Here are five inventions that came out of the Great Depression that are still shaping our lives today. Number one, sliced bread. A century ago, people had to bust out a bread knife whenever they wanted a sandwich or a slice of toast. That changed in 1928 when bread slicing and wrapping and a wrapping machine invented by Otto Rohwetter Uh, R-O-H-W-E-D-D-E-R, made its debut at a bakery in Kilcutty, C-H, maybe it's Chilcoth. Hmm. I'm going to have to learn how to pronounce that. C-H-I-L-L-I-C-O-T-H-E, Missouri. I'm sure people are out there uh, shouting at their various devices. Hey, it's pronounced this way. The machine proved to be so popular that Rohweeder, uh, that's a second way I've, so, uh, <laughs> I've pronounced his name, had trouble keeping up with demand from other bakeries. And after the Depression hit, economic realities forced him to sell his patent to a larger manufacturing company. But the story has a happy ending. The owners hired the inventor as the vice president and sales manager of a new division formed just for his machines. In 1930, Wonder Bread started advertising its own sliced bread. And although Wonder Bread used its own machines, Roweeder's bread slicer sales exploded as the trend grew. By 1933, sliced bread had accounted for 80% of all bread sales. The invention was so influential, it led to the phrase, still used today, the best thing since sliced bread. (laughs) I've used that before. (laughs) How about that? Uh, number two, nylon stockings and toothbrushes. These things go together. Before the Depression, the DuPont Chemical Company had a fundamental research program, a team of scientists tasked with increasing scientific knowledge rather than developing specific product projects. But with the economic downturn, the division became more focused. It was already working on synthetic textiles, and had invented neoprene. Although the material wasn't particularly useful at the time, they'd also worked with rayon, 
which didn't make a great substitute for silk and was only partially man-made. Nylon was the first entirely synthetic fiber developed by DuPont that was actually useful. And its invention in 1937 was a very bright prospect after the uh, agricultural woes of the era. Nylon started appearing in toothbrushes. Ah, that's how they go together. In 1938, (laughs) and DuPont showed off its new fabric to the world as hosiery at the 1939 New York World's Fair. The first nylon stockings became available to the public. Around 800,000 pairs flew off the shelves. DuPont's Depression-era investment in fiber technology paid off. By 1937, 40% of its sales came from products that didn't exist before 1929, including Freon, Neoprene, and Lucite. Moving on. Scotch tape. Richard Drew, the inventor of Scotch tape, cut his teeth as an inventor by creating masking tape in his spare time. Spare time. (laughs) Spare time? Mm, I'm crazy. In his first job as a lab tech at 3M, known then as Minnesota Mining Mining and Manufacturing. Hey, that's where 3M came from, didn't it? (laughs) He delivered sandpaper samples to an auto ma- to auto manufacturers and after hearing many an auto painter curse over the DIY masking solutions he decided to design the perfect tape he worked on it at 3M at first but after he was scolded and told to get back to work he continued the project at home drew eventually made his masking tape from crepe paper cabinet makers glue and glycerin in 1925 and got a big promotion Another industrial problem came to his attention soon after. Bakeries had started using newly invented cellophane for packaging, but had nothing attractive to seal it with. So Drew started experimenting with a clear tape. The adhesives he used on the masking tape looked brown, so he had to invent a new type of adhesive to make sure the tape stayed clear. The result was a cellophane tape with adhesive made from oils, resins and rubber as the story goes the name scotch tape was inspired by an early version of drew's masking tape which had adhesive only on the edges causing the one auto painter to ask why drew was so scotch a slang term for cheap at the expense of scottish people scotch tape debuted in 1930 right after the right at the start of the great depression And as more and more households had to be thrifty and resourceful to survive, the product came along right in the nick of time. People use scotch tape for everything from mending clothing to capping milk bottles and even repairing cracked eggs. Continuing. Toll House Chocolate Chip Cookies. Mm -hmm, In 1930, amid the early days of the Great Depression, A Massachusetts chef named Ruth Wakefield took a major risk. She decided to chase her dream of opening an inn and restaurant. It was touch and go at first. In the Toll House Inn's first month, and the money on hand dwindled to just $10, a little more than $180 today. But by the end of the year, the business had grown so popular, it needed 12 employees to keep up with demand. By the end of the Depression, Against all odds, Wakefield had to expand the inn to serve about 1,000 diners per day. Comfort food with complimentary second helpings, along with a busy road for auto travelers, turned out to be a winning strategy. Wakefield is widely credited with inventing the chocolate chip cookie after stumbling on a recipe that proved to be a hit with diners at the Toll House Inn. Originally served not as a standalone dish, but as an accompaniment to ice cream, the cookie became the restaurant's most enduring creation. And Wakefield appeared in the newspapers and radio shows to talk about the trendy treat. In its early days, it was called the Toe House Cookie or Chocolate Crunch Cookie. The chocolate chip cookie name came around 1939 because the recipe called for literally chipping the chocolate off the bar. Speaking of chocolate chipping, after Nestle got Wakefield's permission to use the recipe, 
the cookie started appearing in ads and it was so popular that it started influencing product development. Early on, Nestle released a semi-sweet chocolate bar scored into 160 pieces. And in 1940, the company debuted its morsel chips, the chocolate chips we know today. Ooh, we're up to probably the most important invention for me personally. Car radios. In 1928, Paul Gavin, Galvin, Paul Galvin, co-founded a radio parts manufacturing company along with his brother Joseph. When the depression hit, households stopped buying non-critical items such as radios. So Galvin had to think fast to save his business. He noticed that car sales hadn't dipped. People had come to rely on their vehicles. And he figured that inventing a car radio could be a good bet. Car radios had been attempted before by other companies, but were too cumbersome and expensive to be viable products. After landing on a solid design at a price that could actually sell, sell, Galvin and his team mounted the new radio on his car and drove all the way from Chicago to Atlantic City, New Jersey to attend the 1930 Radio Manufacturers Association Convention. They didn't even get a booth. They just parked the car and cranked up the radio. It may seem counterintuitive that a luxury ad uh, add-on would thrive during a time of extreme economic hardship, but the car radio took off. The team called their radio the Motorola, and their company eventually took the same name. How about that? That's a bunch of inventions that were that came out of the great depression five inventions in in essence wow i like learning stuff i hope you like learning stick around we're gonna learn some more together (laughs) sorry about my stumbling that's it for this edition of what makes you smarter if you'd like to tell your story or hear the stories of others i encourage you to check out my other podcast it's called what makes you famous find it everywhere using the hashtag what makes you famous That's it for me. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. It's KeysDanRadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace.